So before we get started, um, I wrote a bunch of like um, instructions. They're in the GitHub repo that is at the that QR code. So if you folks want to look there. <laughs> um, by the way, I see now that the deck template that I used is, was from the internal conference that we just did. And so all the stuff I'd say Microsoft Confidential on them is just entirely unintentional. So there's nothing confidential on any of these slides. Um, so apologies for that. Okay. I think I'm, I'm going to get started. I just wanted to put that up first in case you wanted to see that. Okay. So um, today, as you probably figured out, we're going to be talking about fizzling data containers with Ubuntu. So as a bit of background, um, so Canonical and Microsoft have been working on this Chisel project now for around two years. Um, so we kind of decided that um, it'd be great if we had this chiseling kind of concept. And so yeah, we've been we've been working on that. Super cool. Would you mind speaking in the mic? Oh, we're recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, I can do that. Um, you can pull it out too. Okay. So, um, I, I, so I actually have a talk tomorrow on the same topic. And so what I did here is I um, just pulled a few slides from that talk. This is supposed to be a workshop just to get the general idea of what this is all about. And then I thought we could actually do a workshoppy type of thing. So this part won't take tremendously long. So. The premise of, of chisel containers is that, you know, we've had these general purpose containers for like 10, maybe even 15 years, and they both started out and to a large degree still are general purpose. And so the premise of chisel containers is that general purpose container images are not the future of cloud computing. Um, you know, the, the domain of distroless container images, which which chiseled is is a kind of distroless container images. The premise is that those are the, the future of, of cloud computing. And so just a couple of announcements. Um, so it did, um, so we've had these container images now for somewhere between six and 12 months, but they've been kind of in this experimental status. Um, so they're actually now GA. Um, this, this conference was, uh, the time where we were going to be intended to make them GA. So there'll be some blog posts coming out later this month from both Microsoft and Canonical officially announcing that, but they're, they're GA now. Um, from the .NET side, we have container chisel container images for .NET 6, 7, and 8. Um, and .NET 8 is going to be GA in like about a week. Super cool stuff. So a uh, few slides, three slides left. Um, um, trying to give you a, a bit of a picture to understand what this all looks like. So these are .NET containers in general. Uh, so this, in this um, example, we're looking at just a regular Ubuntu jammy image, so not chiseled. And th this is how we build our container stack. So we start with the Ubuntu jammy image. And by the way, these sizes are all compressed, as you can see on the left-hand side. So this is, this is uh, the size that they would be in the registry. Or if you were pulling them over the wire, then then you know you'd be pulling at 28 megabytes, for example. So we start with the jammy image, and then we have our runtime depths image. And what that is is it's just the dependencies that .NET has over and above Ubuntu. Um, and then we have our runtime image. So we add our runtime there, the .NET runtime, um, and then that brings us to 75 megabytes. So these are these are just a running total. Uh, and then our web stack is called ASP.NET. That brings us to 90 megabytes compressed. And then for actually building your code, you know, our SDK, that brings you to 301 megabytes. So that's that's what our, our stack looks like today and what it's kind of generally looked like for like the last 10 years. Um, and then the other thing to note is that this whole stack is root. So the the, the user in all of these images is root. Um, it, it's also the case that it's open to its root. I just put it put it there. So then um, the, the the chiseled stack 
So then Ubuntu is zero megabytes because Ubuntu isn't even there. That, that layer doesn't exist. And then the first layer that actually exists is the, the runtime depth layer. And so I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit so you can see. So before that layer was 46 megabytes compressed and now drops to 5.6 megabytes. So we basically took 40 megabytes uh, away. Um, and then we do the same layering. Currently, we don't have an, an SDK chiseled um, container. It's actually something that we're looking at. It's, it wasn't in the original plan. And then you can see that um, we've actually switched to, we added a non-root user into our runtime depth layer called app. And um, when you grab our chiseled images, we set the user to app. So this is like super oriented on appliance style compute. Um, and so just way less bad things can go wrong. And then we have this AOT thing um, that we, we uh, released in .NET 7, although it's definitely quite a lot better in .NET 8. Um, so this is, you can take your C Sharp app, you can compile it to native code. That means there's no JIT runtime. Um, the native AOT apps are tremendously smaller. And so there we've been able, and, and native AOT actually has a bit fewer dependencies than our core CLR um, JIT runtime. And so there, the runtime depths for AOT is 4.8 megabytes. And then um, one thing that we've had some difficult, or I wouldn't say difficulty, but there's been some friction is, you know, we wanted to create these super small images. And there's this really big component in the Linux ecosystem called ICU. Um, you may be familiar with it. Uh, it's for globalization. And so the, the quote unquote problem is that um, people speak all these languages in the world, then they expect um, like currency symbols to be showing in their kind of local setup. And they expect, you know, times and dates to be formatted in a particular way. And um, uh, so you need ICU and TZ data to do that. So um, in the past, we didn't really provide a convenience way of doing that. So this extra image um, actually has all that globalization stuff in it. So it's the exact same thing as the as on the left, except it has TC data and ICU in it. And so for a class of, or a large number of developers, they can't get as small as that because they need these globalization APIs. Okay, so th those are the those are the slides that I was wanting to, oh, actually, then there's the container workshop. I had actually I had two more slides. So back to the workshop, now, now we're gonna talk about the workshop. So um, I'll, I'll go to the GitHub repo in just a sec. Um, but the, these are things, um, so in, in, the, in the GitHub repo, there's all these instructions um, and it's, it's pretty self-led. Um, so um, what to try first. So we have two ways of building container images for .NET. One is the traditional Docker file type solution. You know, you write from statement, bunch of run statements, and then you copy binaries around within the, the, the doc, you know, these Docker images, and then you get this final image that 100% works with .NET, and you know, that's what we've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, in .NET 7, which was last release, we, we built this published OCI solution. So from within our SDK, you can type .NET publish, and it will generate a container image for you. So this is basically, quote unquote, Docker file-less container publishing. Um, so when I say publish OCI images, that's what I mean. And so if you, with what you want to try first, publish some o OCI images with the SDK. Um, you could build, um, there's two samples there you, that have Docker, several Docker files. Um, you could build those, um, and then you could publish the results to a registry. So the easiest registry to use is Docker Hub. Obviously you can just create an account there in like two minutes and you can start publishing Images there. In terms of what to try next after that, like some slightly more difficult um, activities. So, one of the things that's happened um, in the last maybe two or three years is we've gone from completely homogeneous compute. Like basically, if we were to, if we were to go back three years ago, certainly five years ago, 
everyone in this room would have a laptop and it would be x64 guaranteed um so now there's laptops like this that have these arm chips in them but for the most part people still publish to an x64 file both, both amazon and azure have arm 64 capable vms but still for the most part people are are running their apps on x64 so now we live in a world of heterogeneous computers and so people need to be able to say on an arm 64 machine build an x64 container image and be able to push that to the cloud or it could be the case yeah that, that, that's the point so anyway we have cross compiling facilities and various patterns that you can use that are that are documented in that repository so you try that another thing is um uh there are times like with the the native aot um publishing uh it requires a native tool chain which you may not want to install in your machine and so we have container images that contain that native tool chain and then you can build your container images in that and you can even publish them to a register from within the container image uh if you have an existing app we could make it work with chisel uh, yeah and by the way the the <laughs> Entirely, almost like 99% only production of containers. Um, there's this extra thing, we can try that to um, take an app that uh, has globalization needs. And the last scenario is um, the components that we make available in our runtime depth slider are only the ones that .NET needs to run. But it could be the case that you have an app that has native dependencies above and beyond what .NET needs. And then, so there's a particular pattern um, for how do you kind of like re-chisel the container image to get another um, component added on top. Uh, so that's, that's the last kind of most difficult thing to do. Um, yeah, so how about I, I we'll, we'll take a quick look at the, um, that's not it, also not it. Um, here, I'll just go to it. Um, pieces. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, somehow I guess we're like, uh, oh. um, mirror. I always find this so confusing. Okay, I'm not gonna figure that out. Um, I'm just gonna move my browser over to this other window. Oh, yeah, I still don't have the, yeah. completely have the skills for this. Um, There we go. They're close enough. So anyway, this is this is the repo uh, that I made, and so there's basically four main documents. The last one is kind of something different, and so I'll just give you a quick tour. So like in this publish OCI images, basically it's telling you exactly how to go make this thing run. So you basically create these directories, you create a new app, you can run it on your local machine if you want. Um, then I suggest changing the actual app um, so that you get um, it'll print out with operating system you're on um, and rerun it. And then you need to add this package in order to um, do the OCI publishing. And then th this is actually as easy as it is. You just run this command .NET publish with this special switch, um, and then it produces a Docker image um, with uh, this name, with the same name as the directory. And you can see it runs on Debian first, and then we we convert it to Chisel. So um, 
basically um, the if people want to actually do the workshop, um, I'm happy to help people. If people want to see some more slideware, I can show you some of the slides that I'm going to do tomorrow. It all depends on what people actually want in the room. I'd love to do the workshop. Um, um, I guess the other thing is, is and maybe this is a good idea, um, I could, yeah, yeah, how about we do this? I will um, do some of these demos uh, live and then to get people a sense of how this stuff actually works. And then um, maybe that will spark some interest and people can try and do this on their own machine. Um, and by the way, it does explain on the, on the, the first page, um, if you want to install, if you don't have everything you need on your machine, as links for Docker and um, done in eight, if you want to install those in your machine. Okay, so I am going to, I'll do a demo. Um, okay, I have to figure out how to get this mirroring going, this is way too complicated. Um, I used to know how to do this before the pandemic. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Okay, that was it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this I'll um. Okay. Did I? Okay. I read it on this machine. Okay, so I'm going to, well, actually, I'll go to the repository. That's the easiest thing. Um, yeah, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just the absolute easiest experience. So I'm gonna follow these instructions. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to a new directory. Okay, so I'm going to make, I'll be clear. Um, um, I'll call this uh, chisel app. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with, uh, oh, yeah, there's some, there's some bug there. I'm using .NET 8 RC2, so there's some, still some weird problems. Okay, so, um, yeah, so if you don't know, what I did there is we have a templating engine called Donut New, and there's a bunch of templates. And then, you know, you type the type of template you want. You can optionally say which directory you want it to go in, and then it does that for you. So that's super easy. And then you'll get um, a, a project file that looks like this. It doesn't have a lot of information in it. The main thing it says, is which version of Dyna Framework you're running. We have this little code. So Net 8.0 just means Dyna 8.0. Okay, and so then the instructions basically say we need to add this NuGet package to make all of this um, work. And so that goes and installs that. It's just like installing something from NPM. And then it's actually like super easy. All I have to do is type this thing. Um, .NET publish. And so what this is doing is um, it's building the app, obviously. And then uh, what it's saying here is um, it's trying to build this image, chisel app. And it's not, it's not on the chisel bin yet. And it's grabbing a base image from this registry address. Um, and then, then what it does is, um, uh, so we have these tar APIs in the product. 
and um, it basically just adds another layer onto this tar file, uh, which is your app, and then that's a container image, because all container images are, are tar balls. Okay, and then so we can take that, let me just make this bigger again. Um, we can then, it's then pushed to a local registry, and then it's called Chisel App, and that ran. So then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this code that is in the workshop, because this is way better, because the hello world is kind of useless. Um, and I am going to This, 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 all this does is it, it'll just tell us which operating system we're on, which is fairly useful. So I just put, I just did that. So I'm gonna rebuild the app again. You can see it actually rebuilds pretty quickly. Um, okay. And I'm gonna run it again. And you can see we're on um, Debian, which isn't the intent. And so we have this awesome feature that I think is amazing. And it's called Container Family. Um, yeah, what, one, one piece of context to help explain this. So the SDK has all this information about your app. So it knows which .NET version you're, you're building for. It knows if it's a web app or a console app. That's why it's, it knows it's a console app. So that's why it's just grabbing the runtime based image. It knows if you're targeting, um, Glibs, a glibc or a musl, um, and it knows if you're targeting x64 or arm64. And so it can take that information so that it can make a smart decision about which base image to go get. Well, we, in addition to all those things, we support a bunch of different container families. Like we support Chisel. At Microsoft, we have our own um, Linux distro called Mariner. We have all these families. And so we have this tag called container family. So you don't actually have to specify all the crazy long, um, you know, full registry address. All we have to do is type jammy chiseled. And then this system knows where to put jammy chiseled in that registry address. And so we're downloading that to some cache. So I'm gonna, gonna get a new container image. And now we're gonna run the same app again. And now we're on Ubuntu. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, actually, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, for a sec, I'm gonna go back to, cause I wanna, I wanna show you something. So we're gonna go back to Debian. And now we're going to try and Docker exec, or kind of Docker exec. Um, going to uh, IT, what we want to do is we want to go into the container image. Uh, what was it called again? Yeah, chisel out. Um, that didn't, okay. Oh, there's a dash. Okay, so now we're inside this thing, right? And so the, those, are, those are our app files and we can go th th this, we can do this. And it's like, yeah, totally. This is bookworm. Um, so now let's now let's publish to um, Chisel again. And now let's do the same thing. So let's try and go inside, and it fails. Um, so what that's telling us is there's no bash inside the Chisel image, which is obviously the intent. Like these these images are intended to be less helpful. Um, and it means that we just um, removed a whole like attack service area type of thing. There's also no package manager in here. So if we, you know, try to, you know, run APT, uh, that, that's going to fail in exactly the same way. Okay, so what what was next on, <laughs> on this thing? Uh, we did all that. Um, that was super cool. Um, oh, right, right. So then I, I missed, a, I missed a cool part. So um, let's go back again to the Debian image. 
Um, I, I could I could give these different names, then I wouldn't have to keep on doing this, but this is fine. This works for my purposes. So the yeah, back to Debian. So Docker images, chisel app. And you, so you can see this app is a bit chunky. It's actually a very small console app, and it's 221 megabytes. So it's probably a little more than we want. So let's go back to um, chiseled. And now, ch -ch -ch -ch. yeah, now we got it down to 89 megabytes. So the, the, the actual functionality app didn't change at all. We just got rid of a ton of stuff. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully everyone's loving this. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, so here's, here's another cool thing. Um, so the whole, the primary reason why, um, you know, like I said, we um, kind of got these chiseled images to work like over a year ago or about a year ago. Um, and then we didn't GA them. And the primary reason is we didn't actually have an auditing solution. There was actually nothing like technically wrong with the images. It's not like they were crashing. We couldn't figure out what the bugs were. There's nothing like that. The issue was, um, if, if, you know, if you know anything about container images, you probably realize that the maintenance and compliance aspect of them is, is, is a huge piece. So we have people coming to us at Microsoft like all the time asking us, like, why are there CVEs in our images? And so if we didn't have a solution for scanning them, on, on one hand, that'd be great because they would always show us zero CVEs. So that, that would be awesome. Um, but that's probably not what we want. So there's this tool uh, called SIFT. It's, it's quite popular. And so what, what, what we're gonna do is we're, we're not actually gonna look at the image. This one primarily works on registries and the app we built isn't in the registry, but we can just look at the underlying images. So this isn't showing CVEs. Um, what this is showing is um, how many components do I find when I look in this image? And so this is on the, this Debian based image again. And so what it's doing is this anchor, this anchor SIF thing is an app. It's just a console, a console app. And then it's downloading this other image you see there. Um, and then it's cracking it open and trying to find uh, how many components are in this image. Uh, it takes a little bit the first time. Uh, and we're doing this over Wi-Fi. So those are all the images I've found. Sorry, not images, components. So the things that say dev, naturally those are those are like Debian packages that got installed via APT. And the things that are .NET are libraries that come with the product, uh, with our product. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, System.formheads.tar. Um, that, that's how all this OCI publishing works. So anyway, that's a lot of stuff. So now, if we switch it to... If we switch it to Jammy, yeah, of course, I can just type, type that. Now let's re rerun it and see what's in the runtime image for Jammy Chisel. Again, it's going to take a little bit on Wi-Fi. Uh, so all the same .NET components are, are going to be in there. Um, and actually, let's, let's run this again, and we'll just grep for only the devs. Hopefully it'll be a little quicker the second time. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, oh yeah, that did work. So um, the short version is, I think there's, there's seven or eight um, devs in, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, yeah, seven components as compared to, I think there were 92 in the, the Debian image. So this is tremendously smaller. And then you can actually just look at, at each one and you can kind of 
more readily reason about what the burden is that you're taking on by virtue of using this image. So it's like, you know, <coughs> see certificates, that's necessary if you want to make any HTTPS calls. If, if you don't have that, you can't, you can't call HTTPS. Like uh, libssl3, that's for OpenSSL. Again, again, often for HTTPS type of stuff or encryption. Um, libc6, basically you need that for almost any piece of native code that you would have. So like pretty much everything there is very explainable why we have it. Um, so that that's cool. Zlib, that's for compression. So we're, we're depending on very few things. So um, this also means that with this Debian image where there were 92 components, that means that you know, these images are subject to a much broader set of CVEs. Um, yeah, let's let's actually see if it was one talking. We can just um, deb uh, wc dash l. Um, yeah, so it means that you know, um, if there's uh, CVEs in those ninety-two components minus these seven, you have to deal with that. Whereas the, this is just a much uh, smaller surface area, which is quite attractive. Okay, we'll let that run for a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so this isn't about Alpine. One thing I did learn while writing this is, um, this might not be all that interesting to this audience, but currently we actually have a bug where when you target Linux and Musil, the product doesn't know that it should target Alpine. So that's something the team is fixing. So that's cool. Okay, so let's try and make this um, a t smaller again. Um, so we, we have this concept. Um, actually, let's see if this finished. Yeah, it was 92. That's, that's the number I was looking for. So there were 92 lines from that query, which means there are 92 um, dev files in the Debian image. Okay, so back to back to this. So we have a few different ways of generating apps. By default, when you build a .NET app, it's um, you just generate the app. You know, it's it's this small little thing, and then it has a dependency on a runtime. And so, like when I was building those container images, um, it was just taking this little app and then putting it on top of all these layers that you saw in those diagrams before. Uh, and for a bunch of scenarios, that makes a ton of sense. If you have a machine that's holding, hosting a bunch of .NET apps, then using what we call framework-dependent publishing um, makes a lot of sense because you get layer sharing across all of those apps. It means they're much quicker to pull down. You can share those bytes in memory, so that's all good. But we have this other one uh, called self-contained, and then what that does is it basically um, puts the whole product and the app in one directory, hence self-contained. Well, um, that's bad from the perspective that uh, there's no sharing and you didn't get any benefit, except we have this thing called trimming. So that's what we're gonna look at next. What trimming does is it's basically this system that says, um, you know, do you need this library? Do you need this method? And if it doesn't, then it can even it can even cut down within a within a method, and then it just gets rid of all that stuff, and so you get the most small thing possible. So, continuing with our OCI publishing, I think that yeah, this works with the same app. Work. It just takes the the button. Yeah. Well, I'll do that. It's going to grab the whole thing, but then I can just put it in. I can just put it in a text editor. So that was a good idea. Thanks, Eric. Um, so let's just clear this away. So what we're going to do? And I'm, I'll explain what this is all doing. So the first bit is basically the same. Done to publish. We want to do a container publish. Container family is jammy chiseled. Um, and I changed the name to hello chiseled trim. Um, and then I'm saying publish trim equals true. So we're opting into that scenario and dash dash SC just means self-contained. So let's, let's run that. This takes a little bit longer because this whole process of trimming for one, we're copying way more files 
into the the directory um to the app bin directory and then um then um and the first time it takes a little bit longer because they have to like download a special copy of the runtime to this machine um which you just did and now it's saying yeah assembly optimizing assemblies for size this process could take a while um okay that completely failed i yeah i think i i need this no what oh is it because i'm um Okay, I might have to do it on the machine. I wasn't actually doing it on. Oh. Oh no, it's because I'm. Um... Oh yeah, I should go back to my Linux machine. Um... This just says. OS X ARM64 is not supported by, oh, by Jamie Chiseled. Of course. Yes. Yes. I definitely should go. Okay. Let's, let's, um, let's go to a different machine. This is the one I was working on before. Okay. We can just, um, uh, yeah. Polo.net. Okay. This is a better machine anyway, because this is actually but two. Um, so let's see. Let's, uh, so this is actually a machine in my house uh, in Seattle. Um, so I use this thing called Tailscale. Uh, if you're familiar with that, so this is using Tailscale SSH. So I didn't have to. I didn't have to move any SSH keys. In between the machines so i'm like a religious convert to uh to tail scale i think it's amazing um yeah so what were we doing let's go grab the command all right um and then we'll, we'll run it on this machine oh it's right here um yeah then this should work okay yeah, and actually this, this this contrast is tremendously better than Mac OS. Okay, so I think this should work. Um, oh, right. This because um, Dynet 8 isn't yet in, in, in uh, Ubuntu, so we're going to have to do some um, path chicanery, um, which is fine. That won't take me long. Ah, uh, shit. That would probably work. Um, okay. Oh, oh, what the hell? Dynet version. Oh, right. Sorry, different problem. Here, I'm, um, let's get back. Well, no, go back in. That's a pre-release version of .NET. I need the public RC2 version. Um, export path equals uh, home rich um, .NET RC2. Okay, now this will work. Yeah, so this should be RC2, which means all the dependencies will be available. Oh, now I'm in the wrong directory. And okay, this will work. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so um <clears throat> right, so the whole purpose of this was we wanted to see um so what was the number we were at actually? I don't remember that. I think we got down to 89 megabytes. Is that where we were? I seem to remember that being the number. Okay, so now we're down to 15. Um, so that was a pretty awesome, so this is 15 uncompressed. So in the registry, that would be under 10 megabytes or about 10 megabytes. So now this is, this is native AOT. So, um, so we can, uh, 
run that. Yeah, so <laughs> that's awesome. That worked. That worked. It's fine. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Does any this this is kind of one arc I think that we've just done. Does anyone have any questions or wants me to explore something in particular before we keep on going? Um, Okay. Um, okay. So, the, how about let's try um, let's try something else. So, um, I'm going to go back to my Mac machine, and the reason is what I want to show you next is something slightly crazier. So, the problem we were running into there was, um, you know, I had .NET. The .NET SDK on my Mac machine, and I was going to try to um, produce Linux compatible images, and it was basically saying, I, "I don't have the right stuff for you." So we have another pattern um, for this. Um, so basically, what that looks like is we can take this directory and we can volume mount it into an Ubuntu container. So this, this is not a Docker build scenario, this is a Docker run scenario. So we Docker run, we volume mount this directory into the container image, then we do OCI publish inside the container image. So we're in the container image, so we're in Linux, we're in Ubuntu. Then we can OCI publish, we can generate a container image inside that Docker container, and then we can either drop it to the file system or push it to a registry. Um, and then whatever, all of them we would be using the Mac for, or Windows, um, or some other operating system, all we'd be using it for is to host container images. We don't care what the heck is on that machine. So let's try that. Um, I'm going to look at my notes um, to see what the command is for that. So that's this document, publish OCI image in SDK container. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, when, what is the, uh, okay, got like 15 minutes left. Okay, let's, sh let's show this. Um, okay, this is the command, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this, this command, um, what it does. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It. Um, actually, I'm just, yeah. What this command does is um, it runs a container image. It runs um, a new container image that we have that is an SDK image specifically for AOT. Um, so it has the thing that's different about it is it clearly has the diamond SDK in it, but it also has Clang. So we rely on Clang um, at the very last part of producing native AOT images in order to link all basically like the, the libs or objects together. Um, and then what it's saying is done it publish, the first part is kind of boilerplate, and then it's saying, um, I want you to drop the tar GZ to this path. So and we volume mounted the local directory as slash source. So we will get an image um, and just, uh, and just to make sure that we didn't like, I didn't do this before. I'm just gonna put a two there. So now what we're gonna do is um, run a Linux tool chain on a Mac, um, oh, that was a little bit too quick. Um, oh, what? Oh, uh, okay. This is right. I just have to change one thing. Um, it's because the way ASP.NET works and con I'm still doing a console app and this was for, um, 
this was for, um, yeah, I need this, this thing. And uh, just get rid of this. Container. And this P is not supposed to be there. I think this will work. Okay, I've got something slightly messed up. So, oh no, that P was supposed to be there. Okay, I, I need to get this. Okay, let's start again. Okay, that. Okay, this should be replaced. If not, I will go back to doing a web app, which is what those instructions were for. But this should work. Oh, yeah, this is what I want. Okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go back to, I, I didn't prepare for this on my Mac, so something is completely busted. So let's, let's not do that. Um, so I'm, I'll do the same demo and I'll do it with a web app because that's what I did when I was prepping. Something small is 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 not working. So let's grab this again. Yeah, this should work now. Good. Oh, same thing as before. Path equals. I should have put this in my .rc file. Sorry about that. Um, okay, it's going definitely further. Okay. Um, no, this is this is not the right one. This is the one. This is the demo I just showed you. This is. Okay, let's go back to this file. Grab this. Sorry about this. Okay. Okay. So now we are, so the, what we're doing here is we are building, this is a different app, this is a web app. Okay, this worked. Um, and so what we did, just, I explained this before, but it, it warrants <laughs> being explained again. So what we asked is, please build the code that is at um, the current working directory. Please generate a container image for us. Please drop it as a tar GZ at this location. So let's see if that happened. And again, that was all in the container image. So if I don't have Clang or I don't even have .NET on this machine, this will totally work. So let's let's see if I that actually has a recent timestamp. Um, oh, uh, not too sure. What, but let's delete it. I don't trust that. Um, run that pseudo. Okay. Okay. 
try again. <laughs> okay, let's. Okay, well, I'm going to look at the timestamp again. That's that one of the US West Coast time stamp. Oh, it's right inside my house. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. My family's sleeping right now. And I should I should be sleeping too. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do so this this tarball is not particularly useful on its own. So you can do this. Um image, yeah. So I just pulled that in. There was already a name. There was already an image with that that got renamed to some SHA. So now, we, now this is this is our thing. And then we can do Docker run. Uh, so this is a web app now. So now we have to um, map ports. Um, so by default in .NET 8, our, our web server listens on port 8080. It used to be port 80. We switched it in this release because we want um, it to be a one-liner to go to non-root. And so the one-liner is setting the user, but um, 80, port 80 is a privileged port. So um, so anyway, that's why I moved to port 80. Hello, ASP.NET. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so I, it's because I already am using that port, so we'll just use 8001. Have some app running somewhere. Oh, um, oh, did I use the wrong? Okay. This is because, um, okay, I can work around that. I have an environment variable. I uh, shouldn't have to do this, but this is because it's like, uh, why did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, because this is not. Oh, this 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 web app wasn't chiseled as. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Sure, this is going to work. Spelled wrong. Um, that is in the wrong spot. <laughs> this needs to be deleted. Okay, that's something's totally missed it. Okay, um, yeah, we just have five minutes left. Um, I'm not sure. So, just to complete, yeah, the the thinking on where I was headed with that is, um, I bet I can guide that's looking things up. Is, um, so where we are today is I didn't show any Docker file scenarios, but so you can do. Um, if you were already using .NET apps and you were using not chiseled, for the most part, all you're going to have to do is change your last from statement to go to chiseled. So that's like super low cost and you'll get all the benefits. Um, if you um, want to opt into OCI publish, then basically you don't even have to use Docker files anymore. You can then just drive our CLI and it will generate tarballs for you. It will even upload them to a registry for you if you want. Um, and then um, uh, if you want to do native AOT, you can either do that on your machine and install all the right software, which is documented, but you can do that. Or you can do it in container images. And then within the container image, you can either push to a registry or drop um, the tarball and then do whatever workflow you want with that tarball from there. So tons of choice enabling uh, a lot of workflows that are very convenient. And very so um, any any questions? Uh, anyone anyone think chiseled 
containers which is not a good idea. Well, at some point you will be in uh, so we have been asked this question many times. Um, we've been asked many times, like, you know, why don't we switch to Alpine as our default? You know, and then that now people are saying, um, why don't we switch to Chisel with it as the default? So basically, um, you know, a lot of uh, container providers have Debian as their default because that's kind of just what it was at the start of Docker Hub. And so switching away from Debian just be a massive breaking change. Um, so our view is that Debian is a fine default. I mean, it definitely is a bit chunky, um, but it's great for learning. And then the gestures that you have to use to opt into uh, Chisel or Alpine or really anything else are fairly easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and to a large degree, they are the, the gestures to say your chisel are not the hardest thing about containers to start with. So we think that leaving the defaults as they are is the best thing for, for certainly our ecosystem, but probably for a lot of container producers. And we're just focusing on ease of use to adopt something like chisel. Uh, and we also think that, you know, this OCI publishing thing putting effort into that as opposed to trying to help people fix their deployments. If we did change the default, is a better use of our time? Good question, though. Yes? Is there any class of .NET applications that won't work on the Chisel image with so much of them? Uh, great question. <laughs> So I think there, there's no type of application that quote unquote won't work. I think where people would run into challenges is, I've certainly seen apps that just install a massive amount of stuff. Uh, like for example, there's this music app called Jellyfin. Um, I've looked at their Docker file a bunch. They, they just install you know, both packages and then bare DLLs from God knows where. Uh, well, I'm not sure they know, but they don't install drivers. Um, and so they, they I, I'm pretty sure I'm not ready for chiseled. Um, you know, if you're doing chiseled, you absolutely have to basically only be using a package manager. Uh, and then you need to be using packages that have been opted into chiseled and slicing. So I would say, though, those are the exception rather than the rule for the 80, 90% case, I think uh, those apps will be able to use Chisel without any trouble. We're uh, well out of time. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you.